of arrest mean for the country? Well, actually, it would mean it would be a sad day in America that a former president of the United States would be indicted uh, based on criminal activity. Um, I put my trust in the judicial system, as I believe uh, the majority of Americans will, and you know I'm not going to make any judgments uh, until some final decision or announcements made by the grand jury. Some of your colleagues across the aisle are calling for T.A. Bragg to come to Capitol Hill. What do you think of that? Well, two things. One is, you know, the majority of my constituents back home in Nevada want us focused on issues around food security, around helping people keep a roof over their head, uh, making sure that we are implementing the bills that we passed from last Congress that create good paying jobs and that help small businesses grow. Uh, and instead of making those the priorities, uh, House Republicans have chosen um, to use their majority um, to, you know, bring up these types of hearings. Uh, I don't know what type of uh, solutions they are for the American people, and uh, that's ultimately what people want us focused on. You mentioned food insecurities. Um, what are some of your ongoing concerns regarding that and affordable housing in your district? Mm -hmm. Well, two things. One, um, it's unconscionable that any child in America should have to go uh, hungry. Uh, we cannot expect them to learn or grow or develop if they're not properly nourished and, and get the nutrition that they need. Um, through the CARES Act and the work that Democrats did in the majority, we were able to provide uh, increases of funding uh, to help more families um, with children, as well as seniors and veterans who also receive some of these uh, assistance uh, through the SNAP program. And unfortunately, based on the Republican plans, it appears that they want to uh, cut these programs and balance the budget on the backs of uh, the poor, on seniors, on veterans, and on those who depend on, depend on it most. That's unconscionable. Uh, and we'll do everything that we can to defend against uh, the worst of those cuts. What are your thoughts on the Nevada legislator to the le legislature, excuse me, discussing Clark County School District Police Department policies um, following this disturbing video outside of Durango High School? Well, I, I called for an investigation when I saw the incident occur. Uh, obviously, it was off school property, but nonetheless, uh, we need to have public safety and accountability so that everyone uh, has safety and, and where there is um, bad policing or bad uh, uh, use of force practices that there's accountability in place. Uh, I am aware of the legislative hearing and I'm hopeful that my colleagues in the legislature will do their part in, in making sure that we keep all communities safe. Um, to kind of follow up on that, uh, do you believe crime is a growing problem or are you these just kind of concerns that some of the GOP are trying to ramp up, I guess, to get people fired up as an issue in America. Well, look, crime is a real problem uh, from the standpoint of every community should be safe and none of us should uh, uh, rest until every community is safe, whether it's safe from crime, whether it's safe from Asian attack, whether it is safe from police violence or from uh, targeting of immigrants because of rhetoric. We need to all work towards increasing public safety in our communities. It's a false choice though to say we cannot both work to uh, reduce crime, save lives, and break the cycle of violence and also not work towards uh, greater public safety and accountability. You can do both. This is not a Republican, Democrat, or independent issue. It's a public safety and accountability issue. Last question for you. How will the stability of banks impact Nevada long term? Well, I've been working with uh, our Nevada bankers. In fact, I'll be going to meet with the group of them that are here uh, to talk to me today. Every week now, I am meeting with them. I'm a member of the Financial Services Committee, which oversees the banking industry. I understand the important role that our small and regional banks play for our small business community, in particular, payrolls, providing lines of credit, helping them uh, have the uh, liquidity that they need uh, to you know, provide products and services. We cannot do something 
perhaps because of the mismanagement of the Silicon Valley Bank or Signature Bank as examples that now is going to uh, harm a lot of these small and, and medium-sized regional banks. And, le and let me also say this, um, the, you know, we did a lot uh, during the uh, housing crisis and the economic downturn in 2009 to support some of the biggest banks. I was not here in Congress, but we helped keep them whole because it was important for our economy. Well, today we can now not not help some of our small and regional banks that are the lifeblood to small businesses if the only op option is for us to send people to big banks. Because the big banks don't take care of small businesses. They don't take care of the mom and pops. They don't help the, the seniors or the local individuals that are trying to get the first time home uh, buyer assistance the same way that a lot of these small and regional banks. So we need a balanced approach. That's why we're working with the FDIC, Treasury and the Fed uh, to figure out what accountability uh, needs to be addressed and how we can improve that on a congressional level. And get your thoughts on the Fed's increase of a quarter point, please, just to, that you're about to meet with bankers, whether yep. we've reached that cusp now between fighting inflation <laughs> and putting banks at risk, if you'd ask Colin and Maria. Well, look, the Fed's an independent agency, um, so they're not controlled by Congress or the President. Um, you know, I'm hopeful that the, the latest quarter uh, interest uh, rate increase will not cause any unsettling of our markets. Uh, we got through the worst of the worst because of the uh, really quick response from the Biden-Harris administration, the FDIC and Treasury last week. The last thing we need to do is to cause any more of that pressure, particularly on consumers who will bear the brunt of uh, higher interest rates on the cost of loans, whether that be home loans or car loans. Uh, we need to help people uh, afford to live, and that's a priority of mine as a member of financial services. And a, a follow-up, please, to that same point, if you're meeting with small bankers this afternoon, they're going to say that their costs of lending are going up as well. That's going to tighten credit all on its own beyond what the Fed is doing to raise interest rates. Where will the end result be? Is it going to affect your constituents of being able to pay their bills by credit if they need to? Well, listening to the banks in my district, what I know is this. Uh, our banks in Nevada are strong, uh, they are liquid, and they are meeting the needs of their customers. Uh, we are going to continue to monitor the situation to ensure that any correction that is happening in the market or with these national uh, or regional banks does not have net ne ne negative consequences on, on our customers or my constituents in Nevada. I understand the triple, trickle effect that if interest rates get raised in one way that it can affect consumers in, an, in another way, and that's true, but that does not mean that people should be concerned about the deposits that are insured at our small and regional banks because they provide a vital service to our community and one that we need to protect. Thanks for your insight. Thanks for the follow-up.